I have some thoughts. So the Dallas Mavericks finally had their five-game win streak snapped. It was their second five-game win streak of the young season. Excuse me while I adjust the mic here. It was their second five-game win streak of the young season, but it was brought to an end in somewhat controversial fashion at the AAC against the Sacramento Kings, who are, as I said in the last video, a good team. I mentioned in that video they were the 12th seed in the t at the time in the West, but that, that's really more so predicated on their slow start. They are a very talented team. Darren Fox, Buddy Heald. I love me some Buddy Heald. And uh, they got some other guys, too, that uh, you definitely should not overlook. A couple names that, forgive me, I will probably botch. Uh, obviously, we know about Bogdan Bogdanovich. Uh, but I, even other guys stood out. Um, Bilicia, I'm probably botching the hell out of that. Again, I apologize. But, uh, yeah, this was a game that the Mavericks really never felt like they were in very firm control of. They were playing back on their heels. It's the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and even though Luka and KP and even Tim Hardaway Jr. had been able to get substantial rest in the past week with a couple back-to-backs that they had, it still, it still showed a little bit of wear on the team. Everyone other than Tim Hardaway Jr. basically looked a little sluggish out there. Tim Hardaway Jr., hey, to his credit, dude, balled out. Career high, nine made three-pointers in this game. I think he was nine of 12 on the game from three. There there was a stretch there where just anything he threw up, it was an automatic basket. And he kept Dallas in this in the first half. Dallas trailed by 20, however, at halftime. The most points they've given up, they gave up more points in the first half to the Kings than they had given up in any half of the season. Like, first half, second half, any game this season, they gave up more points to the Kings today in the first half than they did in any of those other games. And that puts you behind the eight ball. So while Luka was still sitting in pretty good position for the most part, I mean, I think he had like 10 points. That wasn't great, obviously. But his assists and rebounds, you know, he, he was hanging in there. But there were a lot of times in this game where Luka was getting to the basket, getting all the way to the rim, and drawing contact but he just wasn't getting the foul he wasn't getting the foul call and that's the thing like you're gonna have nights where it's not enough to beat the team across from you you have to also beat the referees in a sense and this was one of those nights for Dallas where the calls just aren't going your way and it bit us it bit us really bad because Luca gets I mean throughout the entire first quarter Luca was screaming at officials trying to get calls trying to, like, yelling at them from blown calls. And you'd see the replay. He's getting clearly slapped on the forearm, on the wrist, whatever. He's drawing contact, getting to the rim, and he's been great this year, shooting about nine free throws a game this year, which is an increase from last year, his rookie year. He's been great getting to the line, and he was doing everything he was supposed to, but the officials were not rewarding him for that effort. And so he was missing some shots because of the contact, not getting to the line, and yes, he was letting the officials know, and he was playing with fire for a while, and basically, I mean, he, he drew that technical, and he could have easily drawn a technical on a couple other instances early in that first half, and thankfully was able to avoid that. I don't know where this team would have been without him eventually. I know he still had a rough game. By Luka's standards, this was a rough, rough game. I freely admit that and yes you can say hey part of it's on the officials for not calling fouls whatever he still extended his streak of consecutive games with at least 20 points five rebounds five assists surpassing he was already tied with michael jordan he has surpassed michael jordan for the most since the nba aba merger consecutive games of 20 points five rebounds five assists that's not nothing that is complete control over a game for the most part but even as I say that I can't ignore the fact Luca took a lot of tough shots in this game now he only attempted um well shit, shit. he attempted 12 threes uh he attempted 12 three-pointers was three of 12 from three and yeah we know Luca has a clutch gene but Dallas who goes on a furious comeback to end this game they go on a 16-2 run to draw within two points Luca drives at the basket. You've seen this thumbnail probably if you clicked this video. Luca clearly hit on the forearm by Joseph. It's a foul. He should be at the line shooting too. And instead, no call. 
uh, the Kings recover the board, and instead of calling a foul even on Dallas, they call they they grant the timeout to the Kings on the inbounds play, or the Kings take it at half court. Dallas expects a ball passed out by half court. Uh, the player I referenced earlier slips back door number 88, gets an easy dunk. That's the game, 110-106. Dallas in this game, like I said, this is... This is the game I thought the Timberwolves game was shaping up to be two two games ago. I really thought that was going to be the game where you just looked at the Mavericks and you said, they don't have it tonight. They look a step slow. They look like they've been on a high, that they've accomplished some some great wins and some build built some real momentum here. And this is going to be the game that trips them up. And that wasn't the case in that game. The bench rallied and was able to carry them to where they needed to do. But in this particular case, it wasn't enough as my text shifts. Um, It wasn't quite enough. The bench didn't give the Mavericks nearly, nearly the lift they needed tonight. Berea, four points on two of six shooting in 19 minutes. Curry, 17 minutes, only two points. Justin Jackson, six points on three of seven, 0 of three from three. Maxi three points on one of five shooting. Brunson, four minutes. That's a really low number for how great he had been playing. 0 of two from the field. And uh, you got Courtney Lee off the bench who went one of one for three points in four minutes or whatever. But that was basically it for the Mavericks. The bench mob that had been so good for them, that carried them in that Minnesota game, and and even the Pelicans game, this last one, the reason that you didn't have to put Luka and them back in in the fourth quarter, they were completely MIA, missing in action in this game. And it cost the team. It cost them really, really substantially. And that's a shame, but you know what? It's one loss. The Mavericks have still won 10 out of 12 games. They are still third in the Western Conference at the time of this recording. Uh, I saw the Nuggets lost earlier, so that's going to help them. I know the Clippers moved just a tick above. But uh, even still, you're in pretty good position right now with the Mavericks. Their next game is going to be in Detroit. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's not it's not to be taken for granted. This is a game where sometimes when things have been rolling really well, especially on the heels of a 40-plus point victory like you had against the Pelicans and a couple games before that, the Pelicans again, uh, sometimes you need to be humbled a little bit. And this is a game where, if you think back to when I talked about that Lakers game in LA, when the Mavericks looked like the more aggressive team, they were playing through contact. They weren't waiting for official whistles to bail them out. And again, I'm not saying the officials didn't blow calls because they most certainly did. What I am saying is, in LA, the Mavericks played through it, and it was LA looking for every whistle. It was LA arguing with the officials and protesting and things of that nature. Tonight, it looked more like it was the Mavericks doing that, and the Kings were the ones who were just going about business. Buddy Heald lit up this team in the first half. Now, he cooled in the second half. Didn't take a whole lot of shots, but 26 points, four boards, five assists, and 34 minutes. Buddy Heald's a beast. 20 points at halftime, I think, is what he had. 10 of 15 from the field, 5 of 6 from 3. You see, if you watch this channel preseason, why before he got his deal sorted out and it looked like he was really butting heads with the Kings' ownership, why I was saying, if you can somehow get your foot in the door of a possible trade there, you freaking do it. I think Buddy Heald is a fantastic player in that regard and would be a great role. Basically, the high we've gotten... From Tim Hardaway Jr. since he's been inserted into the starting lineup, and I'm sorry, I still don't think I, I still think this is a hot streak that at some point will cool. I know this was literally the best game of his season, and so it might seem like the worst time to make that argument, but I think eventually Tim Hardaway Jr. will, as he has throughout his seven seasons or whatever, regress back to the mean and be a, a roughly 34% three-point shooter, a 42% field goal shooter overall. Uh, and a 14 points a game, 15 maybe a game shooter. Not very efficient, kind of middle of the road bench score who will aggressively look for a shot, which there's still a role for that. But that that's just my gut feeling. I could be wrong. But that's why in preseason I really wanted me some buddy buckets. But I digress. Um, yeah, uh, Bilicia, again, excuse me for the pronunciation, 30 points. Seven boards, four assists, 13 of 18 from the field, four of seven from three. 
I'll be I'll be frank with you. I don't know a whole lot about this guy. Uh, he looks like a freaking monster in this game, and he absolutely killed us. Based on the Mavs broadcast, it sounds like he kind of played uh, above his head a little bit. Like this was the game of not of his life, but certainly of his season. Um, but yeah, th- this was this was one of those games that you really, really you're frustrated with because you you. You mount this ridiculous comeback at the end in a game you have no business being in, and sometimes things just don't fall your way. You have the controversial call, and you're not quite able to get over the hump in this game, uh, and you fall in in somewhat controversial fashion. I Again, I think there was a foul. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not the Houston Rockets. I'm not going to protest and throw a fit about it. I'm just going to say, I think it was a missed call. I think it hurt us, but you know what? It's one of 82 games. We have still won 10 out of 12 games overall. This is not going to break by any means break our season. And therefore, I'm going to brush it off and move on. That's what you do when you can actually be an adult about it, unlike the Rockets. So in this game, you have KP play a shockingly high 37 minutes. Like, it's the second night of a back-to-back. I know he was able to go, like, 17 minutes or 18 minutes the other night against the Pelicans, but that number really stood out to me. Now, he was somewhat effective in that. 13 points, 8 boards, 1 block, 1 assist, 6 of 12 from the field, including a big, big bucket with about 38 seconds left that cut the lead to 2 points. KP had a big shot for Dallas here. One of his best biggest shots of the uh, of this young season uh, as his career as a Maverick is concerned and uh I hate that we weren't able to get it across the finish line because it felt like we had all the momentum in the world Tim Hardaway Jr I mentioned it 10 of 13 from the field 9 of 12 overall from three uh Dodo had himself a nice game 13 and 8 5 of 9 from the field he missed a three late that could have that could have given the Mavericks the lead Luca missed a couple step back threes. Luca had the controversial call at the end. That was really a no call. Um, it's not often that you're going to have Luca miss that many opportunities to deliver you a win. It's not often that you're going to get a great look, even for a Dorian Finney Smith, who's not a great three point shooter. He's still shooting about 33, 34% this year. Again, that's based on a couple games ago. I need to refresh and revisit that number and see what it actually is today. Uh, but he's been much better this, this year from three. It's not often you're going to have that many opportunities and just outright miss them. It's not often that your bench that's usually in the top three in scoring in the in the top five, at least, of real plus minus is going to fail you this miserably where they mount about 20 points instead of 39 points like they average. That all was significant in this game. The Kings shot 52% from the field. The Mavericks, 48%. Three-point percentage, pretty even. 38% for the Kings, 39% for the Mavericks. And uh, the Mavericks shot 10 more of them, but they made four more. So kind of a give and take there. Uh, Free throws, pathetically low for both teams. Mavericks, 7 of 8 from the line for 88%. The Kings, 9 of 11 for 82%. There were a million fouls that were not called in this game. The Mavericks, again... Eight turnovers, or excuse me, 12 turnovers, still below their season average, but the Kings only had eight. So the Kings win that as well. Complete push on assists at 24 apiece. Mavericks out-rebounded the Kings 40-35, to including 10 offensive boards compared to seven. Both teams had a block. Mavericks had fewer fouls. And, of course, I mentioned earlier, Luka had his technical. So it's a frustrating game, but you know what? It happens. I said two games ago with the King, or excuse me, with the Timberwolves, Sometimes you're just in a situation where this happens and you just have to deal with it. Sometimes it's just not your night and you have to move on and you have to prepare for the next game. And now you're going to go to Detroit to play the Pistons. Blake Griffin is still playing very good basketball there. They have pieces. Andre Drummond obviously is very good. That's another name, a bigger name that the Mavericks get tied to a lot in terms of speculation for trades. Yes, you would love to have a guy that can get you 23 rebounds, obviously, But it is what it is. You're just going to have to figure it out. For what it's worth, I don't think the Mavericks are going to land a guy like that because I think whatever trades they do make, and I do think they will make a trade, whatever trades they do make, I don't think they're going to rock the boat in terms of chemistry because we've done this before and we ruined everything in 2014-15 with the Rondo trade. We wrecked what was a historically good offense 
in that regard with Monte Ellis, with Dirk, with Tyson Chandler, with Chandler Parsons, and Jameer Nelson as your point guard. Uh, we rocked that boat, and we completely capsized it. Cost us a very... I mean, we we, caught, we got in the playoffs, but we were we were a joke of a team at that point. The Rondo thing ruined everything. Uh, they're not going to do that again. They're not going to make another home run acquisition that cost them the chemistry of this team. They're not going to bring in a huge personality that could not mix well within this team. What I what I see them doing is something more along the lines of like a Covington or something like that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, this is a good team, though. Don't hang your head too much. This is a team with a lot of potential. And, uh, hey, if you win 10 out of every 12 games, you're going to do just fine with regard to playoff seeding and just fine in the postseason most likely as well. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna harp on this too long, guys. That's going to do it for my time. I'm DDP. Don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, remember... Every legend was once a prospect. Salute.